Now, you start racing again, and you're going to all the tracks, and you're running laps and running races and everything. How did you and Mike Alexander get to be friends? I, uh, I hung bodies for, man, you had to make a living. You certainly couldn't make a living, you know, race car back then, you know yeah. what I mean? So we just, when we started racing together, we just were buddies. It just, I don't know what it was. Just sometime we just started talking about something and hit it off and we're still buddies. We still call each other every three, four weeks, you know, just. Um, then when we got hurt, Mike got hurt at uh, Snowball, and I got hurt at Dover. The, the head injury, the everything was really, really close. So we helped each other through that deal. You know, he had some. He had a tough time with it. I did too, and we always could call each other and just, "What are you feeling? What do you What are you doing to feel that way? What, what How do you get over this? You know, I mean, uh, the resentment, the the madness yeah you yeah, just yeah. you know you're going along and you're you're making the stepping stones you're getting to run a little better every deal you get into and then bam lights are out and you feel like you've been cheated but you can't because we both survived and are able to keep going way better than a lot of people can keep going and so we got to be blessed you know what i mean and and not and he helped me, and I and I think I helped him with that whole process. You got hooked up with Hubert and Jeff Hensley at the start of the '87 season, and then that August you go to Langley. Larry Pearson leads the first 154 laps, and then you took over for the final 46, and you won. Wow! How big a deal was that to you personally? Wow, that was yeah, that was pretty big. That was big. Uh, Again, didn't know how big it was until a little while later because you think it was just part of it and you're supposed to win. You know, if you don't win, you're disappointed. But if you win, well, you did what you're supposed to do. That was kind of the attitude, right? Yeah. But uh, Joe Trice there and Hubert and Jeff, all the guys that kind of been with us for about two years, a lot of the guys from Anderson Webb come up and helped us on crew in the car. So it was a pretty neat deal, you know. So and then to be the first – Foreign bone driver to, to win a Bush Grand National race. I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, there was a lot of there's a lot of a lot of spinoffs on that deal. How did you wind up with Howard Thomas for the start of the '88 season? Truth again, we were at uh, Martinsville last race. Remember when Martinsville was the last race of the Bush Series? Um, driving Hubert and Jeff stuffs, and I just. Love them two guys too. I still do. I, um, I think we had a heck of a good relationship. You know, we just yeah. we worked good together. Hubert was he was one of them guys that in practice he had one of the fastest stopwatches anybody, <laughs> yeah. and he bust more stopwatch because he'd have me in practice way quicker than we were, and then we'd go out to qualify. It was on the light, so he couldn't lie, and then he'd throw his <laughs> stopwatch down, and said I couldn't qualify worth nothing. So. <laughs> But that being said, it was good. And in the last race of Martinsville, they come up and they said, man, do you come up with any for next year? I said, well, we got this Otter Seal deal and we got this deal, little deals. But I says, no. And he said, well, we got this guy coming on board. He's got $300,000. He said, the money come into it. They had, they had X amount of dollars and I didn't have it. So they said, man, we want you to drive it. Yeah. But this guy's got the cash, yeah. so you're out. So I said, wow. And it, they were family. I mean, we, we just, it was cool. And we yeah. won a couple of races. Well, we won the one race at Martinsville. I mean, at uh, uh, Hampton, Virginia. Yeah. And uh, just should have won some more, but we had to keep blowing up motors. But that was part of the deal because we had a deal with Grumpy Jangus to, to supply us with motors to test the new connecting rod. They were going to put in the new Camaro, the new Corvettes. And they wanted to put them in raw, just like they produced them. And they said, you're going to break rods, but we're going to keep putting them in there until we find one that's, that works. So we broke four or five motors. And a couple of the races were running really good, but you broke. And then you didn't get paid. You know, yeah. back then I was 50% of the prize money. So if you made 
$1,830 to win a race. <laughs> You're, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. anyway, so I was out of a deal. I mean, I, I kind of mad, you know, kind of like kicked the feet up funny. But again, Jeff and Hubert, great people. I was out. So went home, grabbed my suit and pretty alone, you know what I mean? So the phone rings and it's Howard's, uh, um, Howard Thomas from the, the zero zero car. Oh, come down here and t talk with us. Wow. You know, zero zero car, you know what I mean? Shoot. Yeah, I will. So we're down there. We got a deal put together. Nice man. And, uh, I said, wow, things work out, you know. Built a new car for Daytona, run good at Daytona, and driving the zero zero car. This is life is good, right? Well, that only lasted about six, seven, eight races, I guess. And how come you're not running any better? <laughs> I said, well, these cars here, I don't understand. And the guy you got running the show <laughs> hasn't been around a long time. I said, you better give some time to yeah to work with us to get it worked out. We're not. It's not as though we're not trying, but he, he wanted to win right away. And so he just said, we're done. I'm going to quit racing. So it's okay. So you get out of the car and at Charlotte, Harry gets hurt, uh, breaks his leg mm -hmm. and he was scheduled to run Dover. Uh, how much have you been able to piece together about getting into the car and the race and the accident and, the aftermath uh, some um, and some of it's come from input from people that yeah, were there yeah, like the yeah. Uh, it, um, yeah the, it's funny uh, that thing I remember going to dinner with all the guys and what I ate Friday night and after that is just I'm just blank on it for about a week you know where'd you go I don't remember the restaurant, but I had I had uh, 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 stew beef, mashed potatoes and gravy and beans. <laughs> I don't know why I remember <laughs> that, but at this little old place and uh, um, yeah, it was just uh, and, it, and there again it it fell in, get fired, put a deal together for Charlotte to run the Bush race. I was on the winter circle. See, if you're on the winter circle, you've yeah. got to try to make yeah. every race. So I didn't have a ride. So Tommy Houston, he knew a guy that had a car, and we put it together. And then um, Winter Circle Auto Parts jumped in board. They liked me, so they come in, and they, they paid the rental deal on it and stuff. And Bill Kirby from Central Gas, they jumped in there. And there was a bunch of people that jumped in there to get me a ride for Charlotte just to, just to yeah. stay on the Winter Circle. And run like crap, just horrible day. But whatever we did, what we had to do, we stayed in the winter circle, blah, blah, blah. So then uh, then Harry gets hurt, and then they asked me to drive for Dover while I'm going, wow, that's awesome. You know what I mean? I'm not awesome that he got hurt, but awesome that I get in there to shot to drive something. And we got a good car now. You know what I mean? There's no more excuses, you yeah. know? So so uh, we go up there, and, and that deal happens. You go, gum, we got to start again. <laughs> <laughs> you remember going to dinner the night before what's the first thing you remember afterwards i do remember some of the days in the hospital do I, you really? I remember um now how long were you in the hospital i think about a week up there and then okay. we flew down um and that was another neat deal richard childers yeah got his plane and flew my wife, Debbie, and her mom, and myself, and Johnny Bruce back to Charlotte. I mean, it just the people were just incredible through that whole deal on the things they did. And, and we took it for granted, or I did, you know what I mean? Because he, oh, it's just the way it's supposed to be. Well, no, it, people, there's a, Johnny Hayes, they went over. The response, above. from what I understand, was pretty incredible. No, Steve was, Wade did a story in Grand National scene at the time about right. everybody. I mean, you had guys from RCR oh. actually came to the yes. from the track to the mm -hmm. hospital. Yep. You had Daryl Walter Poffer in his plane. Yeah. RC. Um who 
I think Richard Jackson offered to pay your medical bills yes. and, and all yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. How aware of all that were you of of the outpouring of help? At the time, not. Okay. Because I didn't – you're just in Lululand. I was yeah. – when I – like when I – Harry and Peggy said, come and stay with us because I half my body didn't work. Uh, when you get a brain, a brain injury, your right side controls your left or something, and this arm and this leg and this face, my face hung down like this, and so, but Dr. Petty said it, it you know, you're going, it'll come back. Is this going to take time? So I said okay, and then we go, and this is the other thing, when I'm at home at Harry's, just lounging around because you can't do nothing because this side of your body don't work. You know, you're just kind of. Yeah. You know, your lip hangs and everything. So, but um, Senior come out and see me. Robbie Morose would come out and see me. And it was just, at the time, you don't see it that way. And then and later when you get your wits back against you, go, man, that was pretty cool. You know what I mean? So um, it's, it's, it's really a different time in your brain. You're still just peed off because you got robbed. You know what I mean? And yeah. you cannot look at it that way. You've just absolutely got to feel blessed that you get a shot at another day, you know. And I got over that. I was hard to live with for a year after, but after you go, well, that's not quite the way to do that, you know. What was your recuperation like? Were you doing physical therapy, or how how did you start down the road to normal normalcy again? Just, yeah, just walking just uh exercising just um there's there's no real therapy for brain injuries yeah you just time and then your your response is to look after your muscles and stuff that that you can control and that's what you had to do which is you know keep keep trying to make it move keep when you did make it move keep going you know and yeah. it just uh um, yeah, it's it's a mess. It, it's uh, there's a lot of us that had basal skull fractures, and some of us haven't survived, and some of us have, and it it's just it's a horrible deal. It, it's a mind changing deal. It really is, you know. And, and I don't. It's no big deal because now we did it, but uh, it's a we're lucky. We were really lucky. How long was it before you felt like Larry Pollard again? I would say probably the Larry Pollard that my wife liked was probably four years. I was probably pretty ugly to live with for three because you're still just yeah. harping on why me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, just, yeah. and Mike yeah. Alexander and I have talked about this forever. And we're over it now, and we're, we're on to better things, and we're enjoying life. But, no, I think you're right. There was four years there of just, just total begrudging, just, you know, feeling sorry for yourself, and it's not the way to go. That's a, that's a pretty specific time frame. Um, was there any one particular incident that brought you out of that? Or was that just a gradual process of getting back to normal? Yeah, I, I think it was for me just gradually, okay. probably by input from a few people that you thought the world of, just like, Pollard, get your junk together, man. You're able to walk around, feel, you know what I mean? And, you, and when you're high spirit yourself you kind of you listen to it but you don't heed and then all of a sudden two or three people say it you go maybe there's something I'm missing here you know what I mean and I yeah. think that's how it gradually took over you know uh, I feel I'm a different person now than I than I was three years after you know your first time back in a car you went to Victoria and you ran at Western Speedway and as many laps as you'd made there Again, going back to your book, you didn't remember it. I didn't remember. I could not remember making a lap there. Wow. And I just, and it was, that was a hard deal because I, 
um, Doug Jeffries, a real good friend of mine, he supplied a car that we were going to run the Canada 200, whatever it was up there. And uh, he said, "Well, and it was a, it was, it was, wasn't six and eight, eight months after the deal. You know what I mean? I, I wasn't supposed to be there. My neck hadn't healed, and my lungs hadn't healed yet. And I'll be all right. So we go <laughs> up there, and I get in this car, and I can't, I don't remember how to turn, what to do, when to get off, and I had to. It was the weirdest thing I've ever been. And after the race, we finished fifth or sixth. I can't remember." And uh, I just said, wow, I just, your mind wasn't ready for it. I couldn't remember. What was your family's reaction to you going back? I don't know. Debbie was hard to read. She, she was such a supporter that she'd say, well, if that's what you want to do, I'm, I'm, and she'd be in there. She was 100%. Maybe in her back mind is saying, well, what in the world are you fool trying to do that? You know, mom and dad, they, they were always supportive. But dad, dad did say that. He says, man, he says, give it some time. He says, this, yeah. you know, this, this ain't the right thing to do, you know. You did run a handful of Bush Series races in 89. Were you comfortable at that point? Or were you still trying to search for something? I think I was, I think I was getting that back, but I wasn't. A good race car driver anymore because yeah. I, I I hit too hard, yeah. and you can fool yourself by saying it doesn't bother you, but if you got any sense at all, it bothers you. And if you go out there and and you don't drive it in there 103 percent, you might as well get out. And Bill Kirby from Central Gas, he was a co-sponsor on the the Ham car, and he said, "Oh man," he said, "Well, let's just put something together here, and we'll." Put a bush deal together and he bought a truck and trailer and supplied some cars and and but i had to do all the work i had to actually build a shop so we could work out of it i couldn't afford to pay anybody so yeah. you kind of did it yourself yeah well we built the car we had barry poovy and and um some other guys come over and helped us and for nothing just because they're great guys we go to the racetrack we get our Weekend Warriors, so to speak. I drive the truck and trailer to the racetrack. Didn't have a CDL, but, you know, I mean, yeah. go to the race, unload the car, go out in the track and practice, come in, get out of the seat, change the left rear spring, jump back in the car. That was disappearing. I mean, it was yeah, starting to yeah, be where yeah. you had to have your stuff together. So I went to Bill Kirby, and I says, Bill, I, said, I really appreciate what you're trying to do here. I said, but... I'm just wasting your money. I said, I, I can't do this. We're not running good. I says, it's just, it's gone beyond what we're doing here. And I think it was a, and he was spending, he was a pretty well off guy, and he was spending more money than he wanted to, but yeah. it wasn't enough. I said, unless we can hire a couple guys and blah, blah, blah. And, and I says, I just soon, I just don't want to lose your friendship. I'd rather stop. So he said, okay. I think it was a God blessing. For, it was a, you know, it was a blessing for him just to say, I said, we had enough, you know. So that pretty well ended it, you know. Were you officially done at that point in your mind driving, or were you still I don't think hoping so. Hoping to I, drive at some point? I think, um, yes, I was hoping that somebody would come along. And the way I looked at that deal was um, we were going to get back in the – I think Bill did too. He said, well – Larry, before you got hurt, you were starting to run good, and you just everything was starting to come along. You want to race, and you know you're getting kind of getting a little bit better at this deal. Because I'm basically a rookie from Canada that you know started driving in '85, six, seven, eight. That's three years. So I'm still I was learning every time I went, and I think that we he thought that he would just put this deal together. We'd go to the racetrack and sponsors would jump right in there and help yeah, us out. Yeah. That didn't happen. Yeah. So we, you know, I just, so then I started building late, late models. I run some races at Concord and, and, uh, uh, Greenville pick and stuff like that. And we just have fun. I mean, it was kind of back to old school, you know, so, and I felt comfortable in that. I, and I, yeah. I think we ran pretty good in that stuff, you know, but.
But uh, was going back on the road as a crew chief or crew member an option, or did you immediately start up LP gear? Yeah, wasn't okay. an option. Okay, been there, done that. No. Um, yeah, just uh, in, in in the last couple of years that I drove bush cars for Hubert Hansley and for Howard Thomas for the zero zero car. During the two or three days in a week that we didn't race, I'd build gears for my competitors, Steve Grissom, and we'd take them to the racetrack and sell them to them. You know what I mean? So it was kind of a – and then when I got hurt, I had to make a living. You know what I mean? It was like all of a sudden had something to do. So uh, then the LP gear and old – and I'll never forget this. Hubert Hensley called me um, when we got hurt. And he called me, he says, listen, he says, now, he says, any of them gears that you need done, he says, I'll come down and do them to help you out just, just so you can get them, you know. I thought that was pretty cool, you yeah. know. So, yeah. so yeah, we just started that, and it just it just kind of exploded. It's it's just still a two- or three-man operation, but we just two weeks behind on work all the time, and we try to do a good job, and we're this year we're – winning a lot of races with the late model stuff you know yeah. so uh, it's it's good life is good are we rich no we're not rich but we're doing what we like every morning i go in i turn the light switch on i want to be there and that to me is a win awesome now are you working exclusively with late model teams or uh, how how far how wide ranging is your business now well it uh we did a lot of cup stuff for Five six years. Yeah. We every as a matter of fact, every Tuesday we go pick up and deliver to Cal Yarbrough's, Penske, Haas, Cranavis, Haas deal. Um, we just made our circle every Tuesday morning. Go pick up the gears, drop off the ones we got done, and it was a pretty good gig, you know, just like that. But it got so hard to get paid, <laughs> <laughs> so I started doing late model stock, limited late model super late model stuff and when the guys come and picked it up they paid you for it and thank you for yeah. doing it and i says, yeah. man this is a whole new deal here <laughs> so we just kind of weaned that out and and it's the best thing I ever did because now we can concentrate on these and it's you're you're dealing with the grassroots racers the guys that just eat sleep and drink it yeah that's cool and the phone calls monday that the stuff worked good and man like you know like Yes, Monday. I got a phone call from uh, the, the fellow that won at uh, Greenville this week, and we fixed it and finished it Friday night. He come and got it, put it in his car. He sends me a picture of the car in Victory Lane. Thank you. Great job. That's Man, awesome. you can't buy that. You know what I mean? So um, we do a lot of that. We do Alabama, uh, Washington State, a lot of uh, West Virginia, Virginia, South Carolina, a lot of South Carolina stuff. People ship it up from uh, date from Florida. You know, just rear end the stuff that we take for granted of what we do to them. But we've kind of got a little niche there right now that's working pretty good. So it's you know it's working okay. You know, 